Hey, what's up? It's Evan from photoextremist.com and today you are going to learn how to make this picture. Now, uh, the first thing that you're going to want to do is put your camera on a tripod and you're going to want to make sure they are using manual mode. So use a manual aperture, shutter speed, ISO, and you're also going to want to be using a manual white balance and manual focusing. And make sure that everything is on manual. Next, without moving your camera, so it's stationary on a tripod, you're going to want to take a picture of yourself, and this will be the first picture that you take. It's just going to look like that, and after you got that done, you're going to move out of the frame, and then you will take another picture with nothing in there. It's important that you're using manual mode because the settings need to be consistent throughout the two pictures. Now, the lighting I was using was two soft boxes. I was using one softbox um, to the left of me pointed more directly at me and then there was another softbox to the right of me that was just aimed up at the ceiling and that was just to create some fill light. You don't need um, special lights or anything like that. If you just have indoor lighting or maybe you want to do it outside, that's totally fine. You don't need special lighting to do anything like this. But I happen to have them so I'm using them. After you have the two pictures in your camera, just drag and drop them into Photoshop. So there's the first picture and here's the second picture that goes right after it. And push enter to get rid of that little X. All right, so now what we're gonna do is just click the unlock, um, the little lock icon right here and drag it to the trash can. That's just so I can move this layer um, on the top. I just like it on top because that just makes more sense. Um, now, we're just going to grab the quick select tool. So hold down this icon and then select quick select tool, quick selection tool. And then go in here and make it a little smaller. Just select the upper part. So your shirt, your arms, and of course your head. And select all that right there. You're going to want to make sure when you take the picture that your arm is not touching. Um, your any it's not touching your body at all so it's sticking outside it's not touching your leg or your side it's just off to the dis distance that's important um, after you got that done we're just gonna click the layer mask icon down here in the bottom right and it's gonna do that and now you can see that all it's done is it's deleted everything but the top part of my body it did kinda get rid of some of the hair though so I'm just gonna quickly Paint that paint that back in uh, using a huge white brush, and I'm clicking on the layer mask, and then just paint that in there, and that just brought back the hair the way it should be. Now, it does look a little weird right here. It didn't the quick selection tool didn't work the best right here. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to grab a paintbrush. Um, I'm going to make it a little bit smaller. And I'm going to make sure that the hardness is up significantly. And I'm going to make it black. And I'm just painting on the layer mask now. And I'm just going to just delete that little part that came out bad. Just like that. And no one knew about that. So don't tell anyone. But no one would know I did that in the first place. Um, now this part we're going to do the exact same thing just go over it just like this and no one knew that that was there um, no one's going to be able to tell it looks fine if you wanted a little smoother line you could grab the pen tool and just kind of go in here and just do this really quick and make it just like that finish the selection right click inside of it click make selection feather it by a pixel click OK and then press um, control backspace because that will fill it in with black which is the color that we want to fill it in on the layer mask so just do that and bam it looks fine no one knew that that was originally there if you look back no one is gonna be able to tell and say hey you deleted the part of the shirt it looks fine like that so we got that done. Now what we need to do is recreate the shadow. So let's grab the quick selection tool and just make a selection over the body. 
and you can see that it did make a selection um, that is on this layer right here because we just masked it out it's not actually deleted so I'm just gonna roughly just do that it doesn't really matter just because it's the shadow layer so we got that done so now let's make a new layer and now let's fill in the selection with with a dark color that sort of matches the wall. In fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to sample this color down here because that's a good shadow color. It's not too gray, um, but it's not too tan either. It's just the right shadow color. So I'm going to grab the paintbrush tool, hold down Alt, and then click that area, and that will sample it right there. And it's good to have the darkest one. This is probably the darkest, so I'm going to sample it right there. And now I can switch that. And it's in the background layer now. And I can just press Control Backspace, and it will fill in that selection with the background color when you press Control Backspace. It's Command Backspace if you're on a Mac. So now we got that. Let's deselect that. It's just drag and drop it below that layer. And then you're going to want to grab your select your move tool actually and just move it over here just like this right about here to where it looks you know where it might be so I'm just going to do that right there because that looks pretty real and now I'm just going to blur it so filter blur Gaussian blur so there we go there's the realistic looking shadow now you can increase the radius decrease the radius you should make it look so it matches up um, with what it originally looked like and in this situation it looks good right about there um, but it really varies like it could be fine if I did it right there but I'm just gonna do it right here it looks good so you got that so once you have the shadow down click OK and now that is rendered out right there now we are going to place that grass actually before we place the grass in look at this let's get rid of this picture frame and this plug that's right here so let's go to the background layer select that grab the rectangular marquee tool zoom in by pressing control plus and just make a selection of this guy and push shift backspace and that will give us this content aware um, thing right here that's in the drop down box. Select that, press OK. And it will then just fill in that layer. Um, normally it works good. This time it kind of left a little triangle right there of light. Um, kind of a, it left the wall kind of a lighter color. So what I'm going to do is just deselect that and then grab my um, mixer brush tool. And then I'm just going to kind of fade in the color from the wall to the right and just drag and drop until it fades into the wall that is to the left of this little area. So there it is. You can't even tell that I did that. No one knew. And I'm actually going to do the exact same thing over here. I'm just going to attempt to select it, shift backspace, and then enter and the content aware does a very good job but it still kind of leaves some weird little pixels so just to get rid of that just kind of brush um, this around and that will fix it and make it smooth so now it looks fairly decent what I'm actually gonna do now is extend the picture so I'm going to go to image canvas size push the up arrow and I'm going to make the height around Hmm, that many pixels, just a little bit more larger. Click OK, and we've just extended it a little bit. And I'm going to need that little bit because the grass that I'm going to add under my shirt here kind of extends longer than the, the picture actually is. So, and to fill in this hole, what we can do is attempt to do the, to do the content aware thing. So let's select it, push Shift Backspace, and push Enter. And it's going to try to fill that in with empty wall. And it does, I don't know, not that great of a job. If you zoom in, it looks pretty sketchy. But of course, we can always fix that. Because it's a plain wall, 
we can fix it by grabbing the mixer brush tool, making it very large and very soft, and just painting in all that little area. And now it looks like no one knew that that was there. So we got that all done. It looks pretty decent right now. That can make a good picture all by itself. But we are going to add this guy. And now here's what it looks like zoomed in. If you don't know how to take a... I made a tutorial on how to take pictures with white backgrounds. Basically what you do is you take a bed sheet, a white bed sheet, hang it up against, close against the wall, about a foot away from the wall, and then put a flash in between the wall and the white bed sheet, and then it will flash the background white, and then you're also going to want to illuminate the front of the object that you're photographing as well. So you need two flashes to do this. If you don't have two flashes, if you don't even have one flash, you can just put the object on a white piece of paper, photograph it, and then dodge um, the white part in Photoshop, and it will make it white. So that's what you can do to easily isolate a subject to make it really easy. And here's why the isolation comes in handy. We can just drag and drop it into the photo. Um, I'm just going to push enter right here to paste that in the actual picture. I'm going to bring it up in the front layer so we can see it. And now all we have to do is select the magic wand tool and I have my tolerance set to 20 and I have the contagious um, option deselected. So I'm just going to click once and it's going to select all the white areas. Notice that is it is also selecting the little white areas in between the grass which is very very useful. So now I'm just going to simply press the delete key on my keyboard and the background is now deleted from that layer. Now I can just drag it down here. I'm going to drag it above the shadow actually. And then press Control T to go into free transform mode and rotate it around and drag it down here. And now we can just resize it, reposition it to any way we like. So I like it. Let's see, I'm just going to fiddle with it a little bit here until I get something good. Okay, I like it big, like right about here. And the angle, that's a good angle. Uh, I like it better like this. A little bit more like that. Alright, that looks pretty good. So right about here, I'm liking it. Um... All right, that's a good position right there. I'm going to push enter, and that is now in there. It looks pretty good. There is one little tiny problem that I forgot on the last picture that I made that was on my Facebook page, and this is why I'm making this tutorial, because I posted a picture on my Facebook page um, about a week ago, and a bunch of people liked it. Um, and this is why I'm making the tutorial. But on that original picture, I forgot to make the shadow. So, in order to do that, what I'm going to do is just select the shadow layer right here. I'm going to grab my brush tool again, and I'm going to make sure that I'm painting with the same color that the shadow was. And now, I can just come in, in here with a big soft brush and just draw that shadow back in. I'm going to do it with a little bit of a lighter opacity. I'm going to make the size a little bit larger. I'm going to do that right there. And that doesn't look too bad. Actually, yeah, that looks pretty good. So, oh yeah, that's good. Right there. So, there's the shadow. Here it is before and after. So that's that. I've just paint brushed in the shadow right there. 
So now we got that. Um, it does look a little weird because the, some, sometimes the grass, it looks pretty bright um, on the edges of the grass. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my burn tool right there. I'm going to grab a bit of a small brush. So what I'm going to do actually is now burn the highlights. Just kind of do that a little bit. You might need to lower the opacity a little bit if you don't want to burn it too much. So just like that. And there we go. It doesn't look too bad now. All right. Now, one last thing I'm going to do is just burn the grass a little bit. So I'm going to click the burn tool again, go into my shadows, and it's on 25% right now for the exposure. I'm just going to grab a big brush and simply burn the grass just a little bit. Just like so. And actually, I'm going to burn the mid-tones, actually. No, that doesn't look good. I'm going to go back to the shadows, burn the shadows. Especially down here. There we go. So here's the before the burn. And here is after the burn. It just gives it a little bit more color. And I think it just looks a little bit better. So that's how you make a object coming out of your body while you are floating in midair up against a wall. You can do it um, not up against a wall if you want to. If you just want to get rid of the shadow stuff and do it normal, go ahead and do it. Be my guest. Um, here's some other cool examples here. Uh, you could just put some like mechanic machinery underneath you. You could put hair underneath you. I really like that one. Uh, you could put more body parts underneath you if you wanted to. <laughs> you could put a guitar, uh, whatever you want, a musical instrument, another copy of yourself, whatever you want to do. So taking a picture against a plain background is really nice because you can easily isolate the subject and then place it in another picture later, just like this picture. So have fun with that. I haven't really titled this picture at all. I like it best when, like, I, I just don't like a title with this one. I just like it just how it is. So that's that. And also check out the Facebook page. Go to facebook.com forward slash photo extremist. That's where you can find more of my pictures and you can find tutorials and you can also see just, you know, the, the, the Facebook wall. Who doesn't want to see the comments?